Hello students, we look at this important section in chemical kinetics about parallel reactions. Parallel reactions compete with each other. Um, let's look at this set of parallel reactions where a reactant A changes simultaneously into product B in one reaction and into another product C in a parallel and competing reaction the two reactions compete with each other okay suppose both the reactions are first order and initially only a is present in the container only a is taken while the amount of b and c initially suppose zero now, how the reaction proceeds and the uh, kinetics involved, we'll try to understand. Let the rate constants be K1 and K2 for the two parallel reactions. So, I'll say that again, we have two parallel reactions, A changing to B and A changing to C. Both the reactions are given as first order reaction. Initially, only A is present in the vessel and uh, uh, rate constants are specified as K1 and K2 for the two reactions. Okay, both are first order. So, for reaction 1, in reaction 1, A gets consumed and B is produced. In reaction 1, this dB by dt indicates rate of change of concentration of B that would be equal to K1 into A raised to 1 because it is a first order reaction given to us. In reaction 2, similarly you can write dc by dt rate of formation of C would be k2 into a raised to 1. Now both the compounds b and c are being obtained from a. So the net rate at which a gets consumed should be sum of the rates of production of a b and c. So if we use these two expressions here, I will be getting k1 plus k2 into a okay Let, let's look at this equation uh, minus dA by dt is equal to k1 plus k2 into a which can also be written as so this is the differential rate law for a or concentration of a here k effective I have used to denote effective rate constant for the parallel reaction and is equal to k1 plus k2. Okay. If we integrate this equation, we write it like this and integrate between the time interval 0 and t. These are the two time instants at t equals 0 reaction starts and after some time t how the concentration of A would be we should be able to get after integration. So if we integrate we will be getting Using property of law, okay. This can be now written like this. So after integration, we obtain concentration of A. You can see how concentration of A, this reactant, which is the common reactant for both reactions, how concentration of A varies with time. As time passes on, concentration of A will decrease exponentially. So this is how concentration of A should vary with time. It should be an exponential decrease as per this equation. Initial concentration being A naught and then it decreases exponentially. Okay. Let's see. Now from the previous equations, we got these relations okay. this initial set of equations now 
if we divide these two and integrate, we'll be able to get this important relation which says that concentration of the two products B and C are in the ratio of their respective rate constants K1 and K2. So if in a particular case K1 and K2 happen to be equal, the ratio would be 1 which indicates equal amounts of B and C would be produced. 50% of B and 50% of C would be obtained in the product mixture. Uh, but if K1 and K2 are not equal, then the one having higher rate constant will uh, lead to production of higher amount of that product. Okay, so if K1 is more than K2, then amount of B would always be more than amount of C in the mixture. Okay. Using this, we can write percentage of B in the product mixture would be using this ratio here, it simplifies to this is percentage of B in the product mixture. And percentage of C in the product mixture similarly can be written as K2 upon K1 plus K2 into 100. Okay. Now careful integration of the results which we have seen can also give you concentration of B at time T as K1 upon K1 plus K2 into K0. This should be concentration of B at time T. Students can try uh, the results I have specified on the board, integrate them and uh, you'll be able to verify this is how this is what the expression for concentration of B should be. Similarly, concentration of C at any time T would be you should try this as an exercise and you should be able to evaluate. So basic integration. Okay, so this gives you concentration of B as well as C at any time T in the reaction. Okay, let, let's look at a question. Let's see this example based on panel reaction. Two panel reactions are specified. K1, K2 being the rate constants and it says both reactions are first order. The ratio of rate constants is specified and K1 is given as X. If K1 is given as X, K2 can be taken as 10X. Okay, now question says find ratio of concentration of C and A after 1 hour. Now, if you, if you remember the results uh, as we did, concentration of C after some time is given as K2 into A0 upon K effective. Here K effective, K effective, which is the sum of rate constants for the two reactions would be 11x. Okay, so let's put in the given values and try to simplify. Concentration of C would be uh, this is how we can write concentration of C after one hour. I have uh, values of K2, K1 and K effective here as 11x and T as 1R. The question says we have to find out 1R. Similarly, I will find out AT that should be A0 A raised to minus 11x and T is again 1 so I use that value here. Now we can divide these two and get the ratio of concentration. Which simplifies to this should be the required ratio of concentrations of A and C. Okay. Thank you.